When you are dealing with tight systems, that is, astronomical systems where the objects are relatively close, such as gas giant moon systems or even low mass planetary systems, something you will often come across is orbital resonance. In those systems, resonance is a vital process to their long term stability. But what is resonance? And more specifically, how does it actually work? Let's go over this phenomenon today briefly, talking about some of the most common types of resonance found in the cosmos. First of all, resonance has very broad applications beyond just the field of astronomy, but today I really want to focus in on its applications within astronomy, because that's what I've been dealing with in Project ESPA right now, and a full physics video on resonance as a whole would probably take an hour lol. So then, within astronomy resonance is when an orbiting object or system is subjected to an external force such as the gravity of its parent or a co-orbiter at a frequency that matches its own, which results in the synchronization of its rotation and or orbital period. That may sound complicated, but trust me, by the end of this video it will all make sense to you. Imagine we have a planet orbiting a star in a tight orbit. Due to this, the gravity of the star over this small distance weighs heavy on the planet, making the planet's rotation very energy expensive. Hence, over time it will tug and slow the rotation till eventually it slows to be just as long as the orbital period, synchronizing them, so one side of the planet may always face its star, resulting in a tidal lock. Tidal locks are one of the simplest forms of resonance and you can observe one right here on Earth with the moon. Since the moon always faces the same side to earth, it's tidally locked due to the earth's gravitational influence. The moon still rotates though, but its rotation period is linked one to one with its orbital period, which results in the same side always facing the earth. While there are plenty more examples of tidal locks within our solar system, they are just one form of a spin orbit resonance. A resonance that involves a link between the body's orbital and rotational periods. A spin orbit resonance doesn't need to be a tidal lock necessarily, where the synchronization is 1 to 1. On Mercury for example, there's an SOR of 3 to 2. I go into a lot more detail about this in my video on Mercury's weird orbit, which you should definitely check out, but essentially Mercury is close enough to the Sun where the gravitational influence from it has slowed its rotation to the point where it orbits its own axis three times for every two orbits. The reason why Mercury is entirely locked one to one instead has to do with its eccentric orbit, which destabilized such a resonance, making 3 to 2 a much more stable outcome for this planet. On the other hand you have mean motion resonances, which occur between two or more orbiting bodies, which synchronize their orbits together. They arise when orbiting bodies exert regular, periodic gravitational influences on each other. These regular gravitational tugs then stabilize the orbits of the bodies, forcing their orbital periods towards a ratio of small integers, such as 2 to 1 or 3 to 2 leading to a synchronized resonant configuration that is extremely stable over long timescales. The sustained regularity of these tugs creating periodic gravitational interactions that nudge the bodies back into sync if perturbations threaten to disrupt the resonance. An easy example of this in our solar system is the way the orbits of Neptune and Pluto are linked 3 to 2. That being, Pluto completes two orbits for every three of Neptune. This link works despite the enormous difference in mass and Pluto's relatively high orbital eccentricity, and many more Kuiper Belt objects resonate with Neptune beyond just Pluto. Laplace resonance is a specific type of mean motion resonance which involves three or more bodies and has probably the most complex system behind it. The best example of this in our solar system is the orbital synchronization between the Jovian moons of Io, Europa and Ganymede. For every one orbit of Ganymede, Europa completes two and Io completes four, lining them up in a perfect one to two to four resonance chain, orbiting Jupiter like clockwork. 
But such a chain doesn't need to be that perfect. Pluto's moons of Stinks, Nix and Hydra for example are in an 18 to 22 to 33 chain, which also works but is a bit less stable. While remarkably stable in exchanging orbital energy between the bodies, such a chain is exponentially harder to arise the more bodies become involved. This is because to maintain the chain, they may never all align at once, because that would let all three bodies tug on each other at the same time, which could break the resonance chain. When there are just three bodies involved in the chain, the math behind it is still somewhat straightforward, but when you add four or five or six, the chance of this happening naturally quickly approaches impossibility. Imagine the three body chain around Jupiter with Europa in the middle of it. Every time it aligns with Io, its orbit is pulled in slightly, and then later when it aligns with Ganymede, it's stuck out slightly again. This game of tug and war between Jupiter's moons is stable because Europa aligns twice with Io and once with Ganymede per orbit, making sure the moon is never tucked too far either way by them. Ganymede then aligning occasionally with Io to smooth out the remaining energy. But because the moons don't triple align, it's never tugged on too much, ensuring stability and a slow outward migration for the chain. However, now imagine there would be a fourth body involved to tug Ganymede out as well. Europa now needs to tug Ganymede in and do so at the same time its orbit is in the tugged out position. Suddenly the simple rhythm of tugs becomes a lot more complex. And now imagine a fifth body tugging. It's still possible, but the complexity of the rhythm to make it work is increasing exponentially. For this reason, long Laplace chains become increasingly unlikely the more bodies become involved, to the point the system will favor individual resonance networks over a perfect 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32 and so on chain. Bodies do like these chains though, because they are so dynamically stable, that if you give them enough time, they will fall into them naturally. Jupiter does have a fourth moon, Callisto. And while today Callisto is non-resonant with the Io, Europa and Ganymede chain, simulations have shown that it could eventually be pulled in naturally in about one and a half billion years or so. Tidal forces between Jupiter and its moons cause Io to slowly migrate outwards. It being a resonant object however means the whole chain is pulled along to migrate outwards together. As Callisto is further out it migrates much slower than the chain, which means Ganymede's orbit will crawl closer and closer to being exactly half of Callisto's, until eventually it will sink 1 to 2. This will cause temporary chaos in the system, with Ganymede and Callisto becoming very eccentric, but the most likely eventual outcome outcome will be that Callisto gets added to expand the resonance chain to 1 to 2 to 4 to 8. The fact these things happen naturally over time shows how systems in our universe are self-organizing and evolving from chaotic high energy configurations towards more organized low energy configurations. So if you're world building with older systems, consider adding more types of resonance to it with age. Another type of specific mean motion resonance is co-orbit resonance. This one occurs when two or more bodies share the same orbit around an object. Within our solar system, the best example of this are the Trojans, which co-orbit with Jupiter, leading or trailing its orbit by 60 degrees. While Jupiter's Trojans are the most famous, these bodies have also been found sharing the orbits of Mars, Uranus, Neptune and even the Earth clustering around the stable Lagrangian points of L4 and L5. Another example of this might have been Thea, the planet responsible for forming our moon, might have existed on Earth's Lagrangian point before impacting the proto-Earth. These types of resonance are the main ones we can observe. There are others such as Lindblad and Secular Resonances, but in general these involve groups of small objects such as ring fragments or asteroids, and not planets or moons, and are thus much more specific versions of the ones we've just covered. In conclusion, there are many different ways orbits can interact with one another in systems over long time periods. Sustained interactions can lead to the bodies resonating with each other, which might seem complex mathematically, but mechanically is quite simple as I hope I was able to explain today. So I hope you found this video informative. Leave a like and a comment if you did. I'm currently world building a resonating moon system for my world building project ESPA, so if that is something that sounds interesting to you, stick around and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.
Stay tuned. <laughs>